Hi, My everyone. Name is to Sergey. Hi, Sergey. Morning. Hi, <laughs> What's going on in Australia? Oh, the summer is coming, so everything everything is um, uh, being reborn. So all the trees uh, have leaves now. Everything everything is cool. The the a lot of uh, a lot of uh, positivity in there. The COVID numbers are down, so everyone is happy. Okay, introduce yourself, please. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Sergei Jenko. I'm I'm a founder of a company called Chronotech used to be Chronobank, uh, and we've been working a lot in HR and blockchain, and blockchain and HR, and trying to uh, marry up the two together. Okay, tell me something interesting about crypto. Um, well, crypto, <laughs> is, what's, what's not interesting about crypto? Crypto is something new, something you can, uh, anyone can play around with, and uh, uh, anyone anyone can uh, look at the, opp the opportunities and uh, and uh, try try to make something there so it's like it's like a big lego so uh, currently uh, well, let's call it uh, lego for geeks uh, uh, currently and uh, it's pretty cool as in as in uh, it's worth uh, it, there's always something to read there's always something to learn there's always there are always new things coming out and uh, everyone is really super excited about this uh, and what's going on with your uh, company? Well, we just we just released uh, we just released uh, uh, gigs on our platform. So basically, we're, like I said, we're trying to marry blockchain and HR and uh, remote work. And we just released uh, remote work on the blockchain. So instead of uh, when when somebody is paying for work, instead of uh, sending it to escrow.com or another escrow service, uh, people pay in crypto and they send it to a smart contract. So you can, it's, it's uh, always traceable, always accountable, and uh, it works It works like, like a charm, basically. So, so it's a lot simpler, a lot quicker, and you don't need to, um, to spend lots of time verifying and signing up to services like Pioneer and, uh, uh, and PayPal. And uh, you can uh, really and what is it different? What is the difference with, uh, with Upwork, for example? Or the with Upwork? Yeah. Well, Upwork, Upwork has been around for a while. I mean, I remember still times of Autodesk and El uh, what is it, Elance. Now, the difference is that we pay in crypto and everything works uh, very quick. And uh, another thing is that uh, your money is safe and uh, like a lot of times well, we're just releasing a new release where it's not even held by us. So the difference is uh, uh, speed and the uh, technology. And what is your target audience? Well, target audience, it's pretty much anyone, freelancers, uh, anyone that can uh, do something remotely at the start and hopefully, hopefully in real life later on. Uh, so pretty much anything, anyone who's got a talent for design or something or, uh, you know, like pretty pictures and photographs or whatever, you know, like, or, you can you can pretty much use it. Hmm. And how many cases do you have right now, and customers? Uh, we've got we've got uh, uh, close to five thousand freelancers, and we've got uh, over two hundred jobs, I think, and gigs on the platform. So it's uh, going well. Mm -hmm. In global or for the for the apex apex countries? I'm sorry. Uh, for the global. For the for yeah, the yeah. so so, so the, the the platform is global. So we've got a lot of uh, Eastern Europe in there. We've got a lot of Asia in there, and uh, a little bit of uh, US and Europe as far as the uh, jobs are concerned. So it's so it's global. Yes, we're targeting global audience. Uh, and what what about your next steps for your product and for the market feed? Yeah. So. Basically, uh, the since since we are from crypto, I mean, uh, crypto guys are our target market as well, right? As far as as far as uh, creating jobs there and paying people in crypto, so the next steps are basically uh, creating a non-custodial solution for for the for the for, for work, and uh, and integrating with DeFi. So we just currently uh, doing a platform where you can yield farm, uh, where, where, where we can farm token uh, while while the job is being completed and uh, um, 
if you support the project uh, from from outside the, the ecosystem, then you can just uh, you know stake stake your tokens for 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 to, to, to receive the rewards. So basically, the long long answer short, uh, the next steps are integrating more with the DeFi community and creating non custodial solutions. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, why the cryptocurrency so popular uh, right now? Well, as far as as far as popularity is concerned, uh, I mean, what's the alternative, right? Crypto for me and the Bitcoin in particular actually is first time in human development in history, right? Uh, well, like we're talking about millions of years back since cavemen, uh, people have something that is unconfiscable, right? Let's call it a, that. You somebody somebody from the outside cannot take away from you, even physically, uh, and. Uh, it's it's very amazing uh, when when people understand what this really is. It it it, it, it moves everyone. Uh, so, like before, for example, if you if you had any money or wealth or something, I mean, like you know, your your gold bars or your gold coins uh, could be confiscated or could be stolen or whatever, right? Uh, then you know the banks the banks at will can just block accounts and uh, you know get the money from any account anywhere, right? So it's not really yours. Uh, as far as crypto is concerned, we have a solution where, you know, as long as you hold the private key, uh, that's that's really yours, and uh, that's quite amazing. And there's a lot, lot, lot can be built on that pretext. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's talk about uh, Australian entrepreneurship. Uh, what is your vision for the Australian startup ecosystem? Well, you know, the, when we talk about Australian entrepreneurship and startup, I mean, the one particular company comes to mind, right? So that's Atlassian, right? So Atlassian, and they bought Slack, and uh, and uh, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, in, in Australia, we do have a small culture of uh, entrepreneurship, and we have a couple of unicorns. The other one is, uh, I think, Curve or something. Uh, like they, it's it's called the one they design one, Canva. Yeah, that's uh, Canva is the most yeah, recent. Yeah, uh, it's actually so, yeah. They have the same investors, and it's so popular. That's right. So, so, so there are there are like uh, some products coming out of Australia, and a few of them are actually unicorns, which is quite exciting. Uh, as far as the government is concerned, they are trying to they are trying to um, uh, help help the startups uh, get there by releasing new new laws and uh, by having these grants for uh, for innovation. And uh, they do have some tax uh, tax advantages uh, recently, right? So, so if you apply to be a certain, like, if you qualify, if you if your company qualifies uh, to receive to receive special grants, then then you're able to basically not pay capital gains uh, for the for the early investors, which is quite uh, pretty cool. And that was released, uh, I think, a few years ago. Uh, I don't think the uptake is very great at the moment. The reason being, it's not that easy to qualify. But I mean, bureaucracy does that. So, um, having said that, though, as far as uh, as far as investment in Australia is concerned, and venture and everything, Australia is very, very conservative. And unless it's found in the ground, as in mining, uh, or it's it, it has it has bricks in it, as in property, uh, a lot of investors try to stay away from it. So, technology, like in fact, I like to say that uh, in Australia, it's much easier to get money to prospect for gold in Mongolia. Than it is to than it is to basically find money for for a local uh, tech startup. So I, I think I think hopefully it's changing with COVID there, and with the current yields uh, in the traditional markets uh, being pretty pretty bad. Uh, but we'll see. And what's going on uh, with blockchain startups? Well, in Australia, there's not that not not that many. I mean, the community is really small. I mean, the, the community the blockchain. Community in Australia, say it's like sub hundred, uh, so of people that actually try something, and uh, because well, I mean we kind of you know we we kind of like relatives that nobody likes in a sense, right? And so part of the reason is because once again it's a uh, it's very it's it's very new. Uh, people are still reluctant to look in, to 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 look into it, and uh, you know. Like blockchain, blockchain is there. It's like they're treated just as any other, just as any other startup here. And uh, but, however, the banks, the banks and the financial institutions seem to sh still uh, uh, 
still treat us like like we like lepers or something, you know. So so it's mm. pretty 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 bad. What are the best skills to be uh, needed to be uh, a unicorn founder? Well, I wish I knew, and I hope and I hope my skills, the ones I have, are gonna allow me to do that. I <laughs> I I haven't I haven't been a unicorn founder yet, so hopefully this skill set that I have <laughs> is enough. Like to answer your question, I'm not sure exactly. So, but I, I assume I definitely think that uh, things like determination, uh, strong belief in yourself, and uh, and focus are the three most common, most uh, most desirable ones. Mm -hmm. And what is the challenge for your starter right now? Uh, for Australia. Yeah, yeah. During the COVID. Like it's in it's in great economy or. Well, see, with Australia, with Australia, what we have, right, uh, the uh, the government took up uh, that the uh, subsidy subsidy game, pretty much, right. So basically, in Australia, we currently have a system where we got universal basic income, right. So which is we have this thing here called uh, job keeper, right. So if you lost a job due to COVID, and uh, you still intend to go back to the job after it finishes, you get paid. You get, currently, I think it's twelve hundred dollars a fortnight. Right, so six hundred bucks a week, which is which is kind of enough to pay the bills for most people in average uh, wage. Mm -hmm. So, it's, uh, so it's, it's so it's pretty pretty cool. Um, now the challenges will come when the job keeper finishes, right? And I think it'll, well, uh, it'll happen twenty eighth of March, twenty eighth of March next year. And when that hits, I think uh, well everything is going to go tits up, as we say in Australia, right? So, um, I think the challenges are basically to overcome the economic uh, uh, like economic tsunami that's 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 coming late march mm. yeah you're right you're right uh okay let's talk about blockchain what is the next big thing in blockchain uh, well I'm a firm, yeah i'm a firm believer i'm a firm believer in uh, DeFi, right you, although although everyone like although currently we've got the news that you know DeFi is dead no longer what it used to be back in August, right? It's actually quite amazing. Only about two months away from it uh, being on top, so to speak, right? And uh, now we now we're looking like at, the, at the end of it. Now I still think uh, DeFi has legs, and I still think it's uh, it's worth uh, worth looking into. Um, particularly, I my opinion, right? I like I like anything anything stable, stable like stable token, stable value, anything that any pools that. Uh, bring stability to the market. I think that's 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 very cool. And uh, also, I like uh, the new tokens, right? That actually is subject to rebases, right? So I'm thinking of uh, things like Amplifor, uh, where where it's a new take on uh, on inflation and a new take of on, on the token. So on the value itself. So so just in a couple of words, what it means basically is that. Uh, uh, the, the amount or number of coins in your in your wallet can decrease or increase based on the supply, based on the current supply. So what that means, uh, like, uh, but but uh, your initial percentage of the whole uh, of the whole uh, issue is always the same. So that that kind of uh, that kind of stuff with the people's understanding of what the value is, and uh, I think that's that's what we're looking into. Mm -hmm, interesting. And is it same for the for the banking system, for the finance, and for the digital assets? What do you think? What is the next? Well, we all going to have problems uh, coming next year and maybe even sooner. Where, uh, well, something something similar to what happened in Japan and uh, Sweden, I think, right? Where where we got negative yields, right? So we've got negative interest rates, and uh, I think that's going to be a challenge, right? And, I don't like in a great economy, in a great global economy, we haven't experienced it. But uh, that will bring its own, its own unique um, way. You got, I mean, because and also you got uh, inflation going to go through the roof since uh, so much money has been printed. Uh, so the challenges are to basically not allow hyperinflation to take hold and uh, somehow to deal with the with the deposits. And the uh, large piles of cash going into like decreasing over time rather than increasing, so that's 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 going to create new opportunities for everyone. And I think and I think crypto is uh, is going to be um, more like to tell the truth. I think it's just going to be the silver bullet for that kind of thing. 
mm -hmm. because there's so much so much freedom in there currently and the freedom to uh, freedom to actually experiment and uh, and uh, freedom to experiment and uh, to try new things and I mean, banking is too inert traditional banking is too inert and uh, they uh, they will not be able to uh, keep up unless they join us why do you think it should be banking or banks like the like a neo banks well the thing is the, the the thing is like i said banking is inert right and and uh, we've got a couple of examples, for example, right? So if you look at mortgage, right? So you, you basically, uh, until recently, and even even now, uh, it's a it's a damn hassle to start refinancing for the new for the for the new mortgage, and you locked up with a particular financing finance institution for like thirty years, and uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's all it's all great, but but uh, you know, banking banking should look in, banking should uh, basically open open their mind and look into what's happening right so you've got you've got banks new 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 banks i think can revolute right uh, doing crazy things in in the industry right and uh, it, it, uh, looking at the attraction it's pretty cool uh, so in other words like if we're talking about crypto it's you can essentially in revolute you can buy you can buy crypto for as long as little as like you know, five cents or something worth worth of bitcoin now however it's not uh, it's not a uh, crypto per se it's just it's just nice picture on the screen and because you can't transact outside of the platform, uh, they still keep you within within like they just call it basically Bitcoin. So essentially, it's a Bitcoin index. Uh, but uh, it's still still nice to stuff around and uh, look at what's happening. So the the banks should basically look at the, the new things. And to tell you the truth, I think um, they're looking at the central bank stable tokens. They're looking into all these things. But it seems, just like with any big big company and corporation, it takes time. And I think I think the banks actually jumping on board rather 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 quick, considering how inert they are. Yeah, it's sort of like the something after the post-COVID era. What do you think about future of the personal data? Because the it's actually same like the social dilemma. Well, well, the thing is, the thing is with personal data, right, and Facebook in particular, right? Yes, and yes. And everything. Uh, the guys, the guys have gone. Well, you know how <laughs> Google says, "Don't be evil," right? Now, I would argue, I would argue that uh, Google and Facebook now are the most evil ones out there. Now, when both Facebook and Google started have started what it's what it's uh, censorship, right? And crazy censorship. So, and crazy censorship where you can't even argue your point with anyone, right? So everybody seems to like you know freedom of speech and everything but you try posting something on facebook that goes that doesn't go with the traditional narrative right yeah um, you are no longer in our society right because of because of giants like facebook and uh, google you're no longer um you no longer have free speech you can't you, you, you know like it's 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 amazing how censored everything is right so we're turning to well 1984 the bad version Right, of uh, George Orwell will be spinning his grave while that is happening, and uh, I mean, like there is, a, I think, I think there is a move for the inquiry uh, for Facebook and Google, like looking to look into their business practices because they they actually horrendous, uh, where uh, you know where the personal data is, is is traded like crazy. But the thing is, it's like people people didn't realize, and I mean, they still even though they do now, they still allow apps and everything to draw the personal data and uh, it's actually quite scary when when like you know when well it already is because essentially facebook can like you know facebook being being uh, being shot by say facebook and google can actually really affect everything you're doing right and uh, and they basically gone too big for 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 anyone to actually like to to, to do anything about it and i hope that inquiry that the us is now doing into into those companies uh, is going to lead to we'll see something like uh, what happened with Standard Oil back in back hundred years ago. So. And what should be the uh, regulatory enforcement trends? Well, the thing is, the thing is about Australia or maybe UK and Canada and US market. What do you think? What is what is the next trends after this year? Uh, as, far as, as far as yes as far as technology is concerned mm -hmm. 
Ooh. Like yeah, uh, mostly about regulatory framework for the for the blockchain, for the decentralized finance, for the cryptocurrency. Oh, well, this is gonna be this is gonna be very difficult, right? I mean, like with the, with the Bitcoin, with Bitcoin and the, and the, all other crypto, what they what the what the regulation has done is basically make all exchanges uh, really enforce KYC, right? KYC and AML to make sure that nobody is not doing money laundering or dealing in drugs or anything like that, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's like a silk road, actually. What's that? Like a silk road. Yes. So so we've got services like Chain Analysis or Crystal, uh, where where the providence of every 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 crypto uh, is being checked. And now that 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 was more or less easy thing for government to do, right? To basically trace trace the bitcoins and uh, make make KYC compulsory. However, uh, with with things like DeFi, where the interaction is only through MetaMask, right? And MetaMask does not identify any user. That is going to be a problem. And I don't think. And I mean, who the hell do you write in MetaMask to start enforcing to start enforcing you know the KYC? So that is going to be a very big challenge because I mean the first the first. I mean, I don't think it's even possible to, to, to get MetaMask to start enforcing KYC. And as soon as it happens, there's going to be a clone of MetaMask to do exactly the same thing. So, uh, I mean, governments should probably start start real like consultation with the industry and really think about how they uh, how they're going to do it. Having said that, you know, like with blockchain and and uh, finance and blockchain, we only we only like you know, sub sub 400 billion worth. So we're like small fish as far as as far as the as far as my, you know manipulations and the crime is concerned, even much bigger problem are the big banks that actually finance uh, things like terrorism and uh, and uh, all the bad things that nobody seems to talk about. You know, but uh, once again coming back to the previous point where you try posting it on Facebook, right, and uh, see how quickly it will, it will get pulled down. So so the narrative is there to basically keep coming, keep 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 becoming uh, worst nightmare of George Orwell. Mm -hmm. Look at the big picture uh, of the social impact. What is the best cases for the blockchain technology? Look Maybe at the big picture of what I'm sorry. Yeah, for the for the social impact of blockchain technology, how it will look uh, like for the. Well, social impact. You see, the thing is, like for yeah. The there, for example, yeah, for the energy. Yes. Uh, what, 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 what is the best case? What do you think? Or like startups? Are you working? What well, you I'd like to think. Right I'd, yeah, I'd like to think that the best case, uh, social, social-wise, uh, for blockchain is uh, what we do exactly right, and that's yes, the HR and being able to actually take control of your work time and take control of anything that you particularly produce as a person. So I think that's the best uh, social thing that uh, we can give to the world, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that that's 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 what I think is is best social application for it, where you empower anyone without even a bank account to start earning the money, uh, and that is that that I think is the future, and that's what we're striving towards. Yeah, it's great, great idea. I'm totally agree. Uh, what do you think about post ICO as the future uh, well, of venture capital? Venture yes. Capital, yeah. Next step. Well, ICO, ICO was like you know runaway, like a bad, a bad cousin of uh, of crowdfunding, right? So there are some successes with ICOs and everything, and uh, and uh, I mean it, it was kind of expected, right? When you got when you when you got uh, you know like anyone out there thinking of themselves as a VC firm, right? Then you got issues. You got like you got people with the uh, with with the uh, not even being capable of doing any sort of due diligence on anything, right? So post ICO, well, you know, we've got we've got you know launch pads with like with Binance with security tokens issuance. We've got uh, some some weird things of uh, crowdfunding, like, uh, like crowdfunding derivatives and everything, right? Uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, post ICO is already here, and that's called DeFi. You got you got liquidity pools in there where tokens that you issue, um, they are. <laughs> You know, they either go through the roof and the uh, people will float them at the top or um, or they're not doing anything. So so to tell the truth, people, there's, there's lots to be explored here, right? Where 
uh, when we're just scratching the surface of, of the whole thing. As far as venture is concerned, well, you know, we, we mentioned before that uh, negative interest rates are going to pretty much uh, do something crazy to, to, to the venture and to the investment landscape altogether. Um, but uh, I think I think there will come there will come a new type of uh, venture, and the mandates of the endowment funds and venture funds and pension funds will probably need to change to start integrating something, some form of uh, you know DeFi and blockchain in there to make sure that there is at least some kind of uh, positive turn on the deposits. You know, so so like uh, it's, it's going to be very interesting to look at what's happening. Mm-hmm. I'm totally agree. Okay, and um, my next question. Uh, if we talk about the insights uh, for this year and plus beyond next 15 years, where do you see the tech industry going in the next, like, maybe two or three years? And what it should be, uh, what is your vision for the future? And what is the tech investment trends? Maybe it should be something new for the artificial intelligence, uh, maybe for the, for the robotics, maybe for the next-gen systems, VR, AR, maybe self-tracking devices. Yeah. Self-tracking well, yeah. architecture, I, I don't know, maybe uh, something with new energy, education, mobility, what should be? What well, you know, you know, robots, robots are a, a, a thing that uh, humanity has been uh, dreaming on about forever, right? And uh, I think the next thing is going to be like, this this might sound silly, but I think that's 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 going to be the case where you go to robot economics, right? And what I mean by that is the following, right? Um, that's that that comes from my kind of thought experiments with the guys from uh, Sophia, from with Sophia, right? And uh, the, the thing, I'm sorry. I invest in Sophia. Yes, I was involved with Sophia, uh, the robot, right, and with the particular with OpenCog and uh, the guys that created it, right. And I still talk to and uh, we do mind storms with the, with the guys that they're that, 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 that doing it. Now, the, what I was talking about robot economics is this, right? So, for example, you sell a robot to someone, right? It makes cars. Currently is the case, right? So, and the robot and the robot sits there and just makes lots of cars, right? Okay. Now, how do you currently value and pay that robot, right? So, the answer here is basically good old school amortization and depreciation, right? So you bought a robot for, let's call it a million dollars, right? Uh, and then you amortize it over 10 years as far as accounting is concerned and everyone is happy. Now, I'm of the opinion that that may not be the case, right? And I would say that if you build economy uh, as, as in uh, pay small amounts to robot for every action, right? So for example, he welded a piece of metal together, shoot him off a thousand of a cent, then economy and the whole, and the whole, um, uh, and the whole model might actually change, right? So, so basically, it's, uh, I think it's gonna, the future uh, is actually going to be in robot economics and microtransactions. And uh, I mean, it, like microtransactions and nanotransactions as far as robots are concerned. So, for example, when you got a robot serving you coffee, uh, I mean, how do you pay for it? I mean, like once again, in the old methods of, say, amortization and the depreciation that were used as far as the company is concerned that owns the robot are probably not... Uh, not up to par so it's, it's like i think i think it's going to be robots and economic relationship with them is the new thing mm -hmm. and what is the next microeconomic update uh what is the next for the for the new opportunities and new business models because uh, 10 years ago uh share economy coming yes and what what is the next business model well, I think I think shared economy. I think shared economy is 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 is, is going to uh, basically keep growing, right? And the reason is because well, part of it is because of COVID, and it's, if anything, it's accelerated that as opposed to as opposed to embedded. Now, the sh the shared economy is great because well, you know, you use you start to use resources uh, more efficiently, and uh, in our like you know COVID hangover. I think the world is going to reevaluate the way the way the way it looks at things, right? So then you will see things like, okay, is it worth? Is it, is it really worth uh, owning own, owning uh, a car, right? Uh, as opposed to just renting it as you need, right? Um, and uh, that's 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 something to, to to basically consider and look at. 
And a lot of the times, I mean, you're probably better off uh, renting. And I mean, that's why it's going through the roof. I mean, I can talk about Australia. In Australia, for example, we, got, we just recently uh, had this subscription service for cars, right? Yeah. And uh, and it's it, it, it's it, it's going really great, right? Where you don't carry all that baggage of uh, you know ownership or, or pseudo ownership, let's call it, of of, of the assets, and you just uh, pay and uh, use it as as you need. And I think it's quite amazing and cool. And I think it's a, it has a great future ahead of it. Uh, what is your best advice for the startups uh, who have a problem right now? The traction, or maybe the customers, maybe they have a problem with uh, remote work. Well, you know, the, if you start up this problem with traction, then you probably should change something and pivot it to, to make sure that you no longer have a problem with traction. I mean, uh, it's 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 very difficult to find market fit. And I mean, we 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 ourselves are basically in this and trying to do it. But mm -hmm. the best advice is basically keep believing in yourself and look out at the new opportunities and just keep an ear out or keep an eye out for for what's what's coming and what could be uh, quickly changed in your current product that will appeal to a greater mass of people or whoever you can target. And uh, yeah, pretty much keep an open mind and uh, keep doing what you're doing. And what is uh, what is your advice for the remote work? Well, as far as remote work is concerned, I don't think uh, I think we're never coming back to face to face in a, in a traditional understanding. Really? Well, yeah, in a traditional understanding, I think it's like I mean, pretty much everything can be done online, right? Except for like I think I think people struggle with the with the you know mind storms a little bit via Zoom, but but everything else seems to be covered, and uh, <laughs> I mean. Like as far as social interaction is concerned, like a lot of uh, like a lot of people can work at different say times, right? So for example, uh, if you're an early starter, you see your best productive time is like six a.m. to ten a.m. or something, right? If you if you're uh, a late one, then you got like you know eight p.m. onwards. And I mean, if you're trying to match everyone to the to the stink of uh, nine to five, uh, I mean we've done it for a hundred years, so maybe it's worth trying something new. And I think. Uh, remote work in particular is that something new. Um, so hopefully it's uh, it, it's going to go through the roof and uh, well it seems to be going through the roof as is. So only up from here and uh, I hope that happens sooner rather than later and I mean COVID uh, for, for all the bad things it's done, it's actually done great wonders for things like remote work. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. It looks like a terrible. Uh, and what is your forward-thinking strategy as investor? Uh, you mean when I what I invest in what uh, what we what yeah. we look into? Yeah. What is it, What is well, your long term? My current strategy. Yeah. Strategy. The, the thing is, the thing is, like I've mentioned DeFi a few times, and uh, my current strategy is DeFi, right? So DeFi and anything to do with blockchain and HR, which is which is has always been my 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 interest and that's what we that's what we're basically looking into and um, because i mean obviously my primary concern is uh, the success of our platform that's laser x and the uh, hr in blockchain and uh, we do and uh, we do everything possible to make sure it does i mean if if if, if we see a project that uh, might aid us and help us in any way then we'll probably invest into it mm -hmm. interesting and then they check new product uh, it looked like the something for the gigs. What is it? Ah, so yeah, as as, as 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 I mentioned before, we have we have uh, we have launched yeah, gigs. So basically, for anyone the, for the millennials, yeah. Yeah, so basically, anyone anyone can can list and start earning um, like from anything they're good at, right? So so if you can. Um, uh, you know, make crazy voice and camera or something then that could be used in the video production. Well, you can just straight away list it and uh, uh, start earning crypto in with us. And, hope. and that, it seems to be the the trendy thing. People seem to like it, and people seem to come to it, and uh, people seem to list uh, their gigs on the platform. But and I think, and I think, well, gig economy is is, is basically here to stay. And uh, like you know, and then and uh, Evidently, that's the case. So I think gigs and remote work is is, is what 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 we should be looking at, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, 
definitely. Definitely I'm still try this mm. for, for my live streams. Okay, and last uh, last question. Um, what is your advice uh, for the startups who actually looking for venture capital funds and venture capital money right now? Well, you know, like I... Who want to actually go to the, I don't know, like the pivoting during the COVID and the Basically, the, 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 the thing is, if you uh, if you got a, if you got a great product and great market fit and great traction, to tell you the truth, I think it's easy to find. Value. So, so the advice is to basically keep working and make 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 sure that you got the uh, you got the you know astronomic growth uh, ahead of you. And if that's if that's the case, and then I like the venture is going to find you eventually. And they, and they wouldn't look and, and they wouldn't look into how uh, you have whether they met you over a cup of coffee or a couple of beers at the end. You know what I mean? I think I think well we discussed before that you know nobody wants to throw money through Zoom, but uh, if you got something that like well to tell the truth if you got something like TikTok and uh, and uh, the thing and and uh, it's, it's 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 gaining traction like like that does, then I think you're not going to have any troubles finding any venture money. I mean, if anything, Donald Trump is going to come in and make sure that American company invests. Okay, Sergey, thank you so much for this great thank you. presentation. Yeah, see you next time. Yes. And good luck with the few project. It's it's really amazing idea. Let's thank do something for the remote work. <laughs> yes. And the chart. Okay, thank you.